First episode of the Plucker Report. I am your host, Sung Min Shin, and in this special four part episode, we'll be paying tribute to the extraordinary teacher and guitarist, Jim Smith, who passed away in September of 2010 after courageously battling brain cancer for nearly two years. And for those of you who are not familiar with him, he was perhaps most widely known as the chair of the classical guitar department at the University of Southern California, where he taught for over three decades. I was very fortunate to have had him as a teacher and personal mentor during my undergrad days at SC. And he was also a prolific chamber musician and arranger of all kinds of music involving the guitar. and. Of course, the music you'll hear throughout this tribute will either be his own recordings or ones that are related to him in one way or another. And for this episode, I've collected a bunch of interview footage from the James Smith Memorial Concert, which took place on January 19th, 2011 at USC. And it featured a stellar all-star lineup of uh, really many of the greatest guitarists living today. And I got a chance to interview most of them backstage. And you'll see from what they have to say how much Jim Smith really contributed to our guitar world throughout his prodigious career, really in so many different ways. Well, Jim was first my teacher, and then he was my boss, and then he was my colleague, and he was my musical role model, and my inspiration, and my friend. He was one of my best friends, and also at the same time, he was the most beautiful musical partner for me. So, forever friend. Jim Smith was my mentor, he was uh, my, my friend, he was my colleague. Uh, I think he had a, such a close relationship with so many people, but he often called me uh, like a brother to him in later life. And he was an inspiration. Jim was a, a first and foremost dear, dear friend. Um, and a dear, in being a friend, taught me many, many things about about music, about life, about myself, uh, about my music. Um, so I would say, yeah, and, and in that friendship, you know, developing a sense of honesty about, you know, he would he was so quick to tell you exactly how he felt. So I appreciated that in terms of friendship and being very frank with you, um, but with a lot of love. So so I think that's something I will always miss and cherish, yeah. I'm definitely a mentor. I, uh, I started attending classes at USC pretty young, when I was uh, 13 through 16, and, and he definitely was very kind and welcoming and, and uh, extended several opportunities to me, such as competitions or master classes, that I felt he was a mentor in, in helping me feel comfortable around older guitarists, better guitarists than me. Well, first he was my teacher. When I came to USC, uh, I was actually studying jazz more than anything, but also classical. And uh, Jim became my teacher, and I remember so many things that he told me about the music, all of his really good ideas about uh, interpretation, and we would spend sometimes hours instead of just a one hour lesson just talk and uh, play. I was playing a lot of early music at that time. And then I began writing music and he always had comments about uh, forms of the pieces, really insightful things. And he was always very open, enthusiastic, and appreciative. So that was my first uh, experience with Jim. Later, we became good friends and we enjoyed uh, having intellectual discussions and challenging each other. Um, I think he really enjoyed that. Many people were afraid to sort of debate with him. I didn't Then uh, we took a lot of hikes on the beach here, and we were you know, climbing mountains together and taking some really, really wonderful nature hikes. And so uh, he was just a good friend. 
friend, a good musician, wonderful musician, uh, and a wonderful person. It's really important. Yeah, I remember meeting Jim the first time. So I moved to Los Angeles to uh, uh, eventually go to grad school, but I was working for a couple of years. And I came to a master class at USC, and I met Jim, the ball of energy. And I guess that's who Jim was to me, was the ball of energy. And I just remember thinking that I've never met anyone like that in my life. Um, so enthusiastic, so warm, so passionate. And I guess that's the way I remember Jim. And um, so I, I came to know him first, you know, just kind of casually, and then through my time here. USC and yeah extremely passionate um, and you get into wonderful disagreements about musical things um, I've never met anyone who would argue so passionately and then of course still it is your best friend when it's over you know? it's just a really warm warm passionate excited human being um, and passionate about music to the very last day it blew my mind how uh, in the, the most troubled times that was the thing that really gave him the most comfort Jim Smith was, um, he was a really interesting character for me. I remember the first time I saw Jim, I had, I was, I was in community college. I was a, a student uh, in, near San Diego. I was, just started studying with the Romeros. Or I, actually, I'd been studying with them for a couple of years, and I knew I was going to be coming to USC. Uh, and Pepe had kind of helped me, you know, go through, jump through the hoops to get into SC, so. The, like the spring before I was going to come up, I came, I drove up with Pepe to do one, you know, for one of his classes, and um, you know, watch the students play. And there's this blonde-haired guy like running around. He had a mustache back then, full of energy, and uh, he really made an impression. I, I really liked him right from the start. I mean, I, I just thought he had a great energy, and we kind of had similar ideas about music and that sort of thing. So, uh, and then of course later he became my teacher. He wasn't my teacher at the start. But I always really wanted to study with Jim. I was really interested in new music. And coming from the Romero's background, there wasn't that much emphasis in that. And so I, I really was looking forward to studying with Jim. And I ultimately did, of course, my last, my last few years at SC. Jim was a big brother. And he was a mentor. He was a buddy and a rival. We had, um, honestly speaking, almost a kind of competitive rivalry. And it never escalated into anything serious, but it, was, uh, but it energized our relationship. Uh, he and I were always trying to challenge each other's knowledge and um, test each other's uh, stamina, intellectually speaking, and uh, musical range. And so we kind of sometimes you know, would goad each other on and, and, uh, and spark each other's uh, uh, passion and, um, and and so on, and that relationship actually continued all the way down to the, the present time. Um, the very last um, thing I ever heard Jim say, he called me in the middle of the day, on the spur of the moment, when I was at UCLA and he was teaching at USC. He was working on one of my guitar quartets with one of his students, and they came across a bar in, in Folias. I've forgotten the exact meter, but it's something like. 8216 or something like that. It looks it looks very bizarre. In fact, it makes a lot of sense if you look at the score. But he had he had never seen it before, and so he had sent a call and tell me, you know, what was I thinking and, and tease me about it. And that kind of encapsulates that that sense of, of um, kind of friendly rivalry we had throughout the years. Jim Smith, to me, besides a friend and, and teacher and mentor, Jim Smith. Uh, was USC to me. He was not just the chairman of the department, but he uh, sort of embodied what USC meant to me, actually. So uh, it's taken a little adjustment. Uh, without him. Uh, it's strange not to see him walking the halls. Um, and also, I think one thing I'm reminded of tonight was his complete joy of sharing music. I mean, uh, you know, tonight's a real celebration, even though we're all uh, have lots of mixed emotions uh, uh, about it. But uh, it's a real celebration, and that's what Jim was all about. You know, celebrating music and people. You know, coming together. I have a somewhat unique perspective because he was my teacher for my doctorate, um, but also 
He was my friend. I was uh, children's uh, first babysitter uh, for Erin and Duchamp. And uh, yeah, he was a colleague as I developed in my career, someone I could always call and talk to, um, ask questions about anything relating to guitar history and literature, um, program ideas, creative ideas. If I did arrange, I could have called him to ask him about that too, and that's something that I uh, always thought someday, as I continued to grow as a musician, I'd always have him as a, as a resource. So, um, he was a resource, <laughs> he was a friend, uh, and an absolutely amazing teacher. Well, uh, to me, Jim was basically uh, the epitome of, like, smiles and laughter and just like pure joy. Um, he seemed to really uh, appreciate music and like what it what it meant to everyone and uh, I think he had a really deep knowledge of that um, and that's why you know if he disagreed with you about something uh, if he you know if he if he had a different idea, a musical idea, or idea about music history or something, uh, it didn't matter. Like he was always still really happy and always your friend because I, because he, I think he realized how how much music like brings people together, and I think he was really a like, um, good person to to do that to, to bring people together. Jim was friend of mine helped me so much in so many different ways. Uh, he came and yeah. appreciate my music, I showed him all kinds of and it was just a lot of energy. He used to take me to concerts, introduce me to many of the guitarists here in Los Angeles. And he was actually the very first uh, guitarist he had ever met when I came here in the well, it was 1976 to play as the opening act for Gordon Lightfoot. And we were friends ever since. And uh, I was making plans to, to meet him here when uh, he departed and I miss him so much. He helped me, uh, he wrote my line on that, one of the albums. And he was just such a, an amazingly passionate person. And I knew that he taught many, many students, but I didn't really realize how many people until tonight, whose lives he touched. I knew he was mountain climbing and I knew he had different you know, children and a wonderful family Morgan. and uh, yes. his son. And you know what we do with um, but he just seemed such, hearing tonight all the different aspects of his life, but the I'm driving thing was music. Washington. And Washington. it's very rare to meet Adrian. someone that has that sort of passion um, as well as other interests, but he's always generous, always trying to help people. And he didn't care too much about the money, he just wanted to introduce me, for instance, to new music and to encourage me. And right now, as I'm starting a new career of singing, I know he will be right behind supporting me. And it's just, uh, it's too bad he's not here, but he's always, always going to live on in all our memories. And because he's a very unique, very, very special person. As you said, he had a very common name, but. He had a very, very unusual, dear, and special personality, and uh, we all loved him very much.